So this morning we're continuing our series on the digital world and how Christians ought to interact. So far we've been looking at ER church, right, electronic churches, <clears throat> the VR church, virtual reality church, sorry. Then we looked at e-Christians, people who are Christians in the digital world, but you don't really see them even at church on a Sunday morning. We looked at uh, parenting. Okay, how we ought to parent children in a digital world and also as children, how it is that we should respond to parents. So we're looking at another topic today and that is maintaining morals in a digital world. In other words, the rights and wrongs, how we ought to behave, what we should do, which spaces we should be on, and which we shouldn't be on. Now, our anchor verse this morning is going to be Proverbs 25, 28. It says, Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. That's the NIV, the International Version. The King James Version says, He who has no rule over his own spirit is like a broken down city without a wall. Right? So it's talking about self-control. And when we look at the issue of the digital world, we see that a lot of people don't know how to maintain control in digital spaces. Now we're talking about digital spaces, we're talking about anything that is electronic that we're accessing. So it could be something on your cell phone, all the different social media apps. It could even be TV and perhaps even newspapers, magazines, that are now digital. So when we look at it, almost everything has some digital component into our lifestyles. Even when we exercise, the first thing we do is watch an app, or the app is there, the guy is doing his moves and we like trying to move with him, right? It seems like we cannot escape this. But there are certain aspects of it that we are noticing are becoming destructive. We've seen that for a while. But have we spoken about it as being an immoral place to be in some places? And the reality is some of the things that are happening as a result of this, we need to bring into the realm of ethics, morality. So in 2005, in May, a four month old girl was left alone and she suffocated because there wasn't enough ventilation in their home. Where were the parents? The parents were at an internet cafe gaming. And the parents' excuse was, well, you know, we thought we were only there for an hour, but we got lost. We just kept on and on. We lost track of time. They were charged with involuntary manslaughter. Now, that sentence wouldn't have been bad, not as bad as realizing that you'd actually just through neglect killed your own daughter. Now, a little bit later in that same year, the same country, South Korea, 2005, Lee Seung Siup. He was a, quite a skinny guy who worked in a factory by day as a repairman of industrial boilers. But after work, right about six o'clock when he knocked off, he always stopped off at the internet cafe right across from his work. And there he would enter a totally different world, a world filled with dragons and maidens in, in iron suits, and he would do battle. Well, he would leave there after an hour or two, then he would go into the night. And then there was a particular day where things really got out of control. The evening went into night, the night went into day, to such an extent that his boss said, listen, this is out of control. You fired. That wasn't enough to stop him. He went back into that internet cafe and now having more free time than he needed, he kept on playing and playing and playing. After 50 consecutive hours, he collapsed. They tried to resuscitate him, 
only to find that he'd passed away. He got so engrossed in the game that he died. He was exhausted, dehydrated, and there was nothing that they could do for him. That is showing the extent to which things are getting out of control in the digital world. Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. There's another modern addiction that has been named today. You may have heard of it, maybe you haven't. Nomophobia. Have you ever heard of that? Nomophobia. It means no mobile phone phobia. You, you shouldn't laugh. It's a real phobia. This is the fear of not having your device with you at all times. Or how about this? The fear of your battery going flat. Right? Don't worry, they got you covered. There are places you can go today and you can just plug in your phones. I was just about to freak out. I got the shakes. It was bad. When we understand these digital spaces, what we need to realize is that there are places without a moral code where people there don't have a moral compass. So nobody ever put an age restriction on the internet. Now you, as somebody who's under 18, you cannot go and buy liquor. You will not get your license, all right? Your driver's license. You may not subscribe to certain things, but when you go to the internet, there are no age restrictions. There's no policing. And if you and I, go to the next slide please, if you and I don't bring our own moral code to these places, we are going to be consumed by them, we will stir up all kinds of things, we will be like that city without boundary walls, without protective walls, allowing a lot of things into our lives that we one day cannot get out of our lives, will start to shape our thinking, start to shape our behavior. The worst of all is because you don't see the warning lights and you don't see this is right, that is wrong. You don't have a Bible verse about that. So we leave these behaviors, we leave these places feeling I've done nothing wrong. We need to use wisdom on the internet and all these digital places. A couple of things are showing us this already. The consumerism, the materialism, and the greed that has been awakened in people's lives because they don't know how to put boundaries. You know, there are many online, on your TV, marketing platforms that sell stuff just at night. We know it as Homark. You can get up early in the morning, they're selling stuff. You can stay up late at night. A lot of money is to be made. One influencer in an American, um, you may have heard of it, QVC. Okay, it's, a, it's an online retail store, as it were. One influencer, Jill Martin, she reportedly brought in $60 million worth of e-commerce in one year. So she's just like, hey, this is the good thing. I use this in my house. You should too. $60 million in one year. That's a lot of money. What about getting into games, and you can get to a certain level, but you need to buy this suit of armor and that weapon to get to the next level. You know the children that spend a couple of hundred rand just on these little add-ons? What about the escapism that is out there? We feel that if we can go into these places, we can just forget about reality. We can, we can be this person in the game. And then we can just like... There's no bills to be prayed, no parents telling us to do our homework. We're just left out there to enjoy things. The problem is, at some point in time, we've got to get off that device. And we come back to reality, and reality is boring. And reality has got all of these problems, and, and we don't want reality. And so we lose touch. We live vicariously through the people that we see in these digital worlds. Much like sports fans... You know, when their teams win, they say, we won, we're great. 
It's a good day when they lose like, oh man, this is the worst day ever. I, I just feel so bad when you weren't even on the field. But when we watch these people, we're like, hey, we identify with them. Us and them, we're one and the same. We, we lose touch with reality. We can develop a carnal mindset. A carnal mindset is just fixated on pleasure and good times and buying stuff and being rich. And we see all these people, uh, pop stars, music stars, and they've got everything together. We see influencers and they, they've got a lot of money and we're like, I want to be like them. And, and they're always online and this gamer makes a lot of money and, and all he does is he just, he just plays games and, and I want to be that one day. What about the erosion of Christian doctrines and Christian, uh, Christian view of life? When we look at the internet, there's a lot of lies, a lot of propaganda, a lot of criticism even of the church and Christianities and pastors. You go over there and you're going to come away with a very negative mindset. It may just shake your face. What about a tool of temptation, a gateway to sin? Pornography, adultery sites, people that are selling drugs online, all anonymously. What about real world criminal activities, hacking people's accounts, predators, scams, fraud and theft? The digital spaces have provided avenues for sin and for sinful people. And it's like that with humanity. It's always been like that. We discover nuclear power. And before we use it to build electrical plants and power cities, we build a bomb. We have guns, we can hunt, but we choose to kill each other. And the same thing is happening here. The internet itself is not evil, but because of the heart of man, we need to be careful that we don't do wrong things on the internet. So perhaps it's time to start asking questions. Things that, things that normally we have placed outside the scope of ethics need to be brought into the realm of ethics. We should stop saying, oh, you know, hey man, I just watched so much. Uh, I watched the whole season. We should start passing judgment on that behavior and say, is it right for you to be watching a whole season in one sitting in one weekend? Is it right for you to be on your phone while your boss is paying your salary? Because while you're doing this, the boss's bank account is sticking over with the money that he has to pay you one day. Is it wrong or right to spend more time on a device in a week, then some people spend in prayer or reading the Bible in a month or half a year? Are we not supposed to be asking questions, not about what is the behavior, but we need to bring these things into the realm of right and wrong? Should we be using electronic devices as babysitting tools? We used to use dummies. Now we give them screens. Is that a pacifier? Is that right for a parent? We should be calling that wrong. It's irresponsible parenting. One of the things that we need to bring into our discussions is that the time that we devote to these places has now officially crossed into the category of being unethical. So Ephesians 5.15 says, Consider carefully how you walk or how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Don't be foolish. Understand what the Lord's will is. I want to say, if we are out on these devices, hours after hours after hours, nobody out there is going to tell you what the Lord's will for your life is. In actual fact, the Lord's will is not, I can categorically say this morning, the Lord's will is not that anybody would be on electronic devices for hours and 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 we're not even in the first month of use. 
The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might for in the grave where you're going, there's neither working nor planning nor knowledge nor wisdom. The Bible says when you have an opportunity to live life, live life. Go and live it because life is passing you by. And when you go to the grave, all the dreams, when you get old and and you run out of money and you run out of youth and energy and opportunities and friends, then all the things that you should have done will have been lost to you. And they've been stolen by the device. Think of how to use that time more productively. 20 hours, 20 hours. 20 hours is how much time it takes to develop a skill, the basics of a skill. I watched this guy, he said there are four chords, I don't know what they are, A, B, C, D, they're all, they're all letters of the alphabet to me. But he said, within 20 hours, you can learn those four chords. And he said, 80% of most of the pop music today all include those four chords. If you could just master those four chords, you'd probably be able to strum away to most of the songs that you're hearing today. And to prove it, he studied using a ukulele. He practiced for 19 hours. He went and gave a TED talk. And he said, this is now my 20th hour. And in this 20th hour, I will now for the first time play a song. And he literally did that. And he was trying to demonstrate. Now, think of the skills that you're wanting to acquire. Maybe you don't know how to type and you want to learn how to type. It'll take you 20 hours. That's about 6.6 days of the average time spent in digital spaces. 666. It's like an evil number. But it's not evil. This time it's a good number. If most people spend three hours a day on average in a week on their devices, that's the equivalent of learning 52 skills every single year. Let me ask you, how many new skills have you developed in the last year. But how much time has been devoted to TV and reading newspapers and watching the TV and answering WhatsApp and little 30 second clips that are not really 30 seconds because we don't only watch one little TikTok video, it goes TikTok and it goes to Tik and it talks and, and it's just TikToking all the time. After an hour, we've out there. How about writing a book? I'm trying to write a book, right? Yesterday morning, got up 70 minutes. Quickly, shh, well, it wasn't quickly. But there was two pages, more than a thousand words. You know how long they say it takes to write a 200-page book at that pace? Round about, round about one year. Now, that's a book with research. That's not just ideas. If you and I could get to that place, we could literally write a book every first, second, third year, if we choose. And they say, you know, everyone has a book within them. We could do that. You could be a publisher. We could come to, like, have a book signing day where you bring your books and we all buy it and we take photographs with you. How about getting fit? Getting fit. You know, it takes 30 minutes a day of brisk walking, uninterrupted brisk walking. That app, that says you walked five to 10,000 steps, doesn't count. That was just up and down, all right? Christie's at 50,000, and that's mainly to the loo and back, but that doesn't count. Oh, excuse me, I just need to. That baby of yours has a weak bladder, just saying. 30 minutes of uninterrupted walk will get you fit and help you lose weight. Now, when we look at perspective, how much time do we spend on our devices in a given day? And yet we say we don't have the time. How about serving in ministry? You know, if you served in one of the ministries of the church, it would require 30 to 150 minutes uh, a week. That's coming, serving, practice, all of that. And many people say, I don't have time to serve. I've got no time to serve. You don't have 30 minutes a week to serve? 150? But how many time is spent on the devices? 30, 40, 50 hours? We officially need to bring our mismanagement of time into the realm of ethics and say it is wrong for a Christian to be so wasteful. Do you know, on average, if you and I spent 15 minutes a day reading our Bibles, 
We'll read the Bible more than once in a year. But people say, I don't have time to read the Bible. Let me ask you. We're just asking questions out there. And it may hurt. Say ouch in your mind if this one hurts. How much time did you spend reading the Bible in the last week? 15 minutes a day? Less than that? Okay, how much time did you spend on your device in that same day that the Bible wasn't read? And we may say, listen, we need to bring these discussions into the realm of ethics. So when the Bible says that we are like, we are becoming a, a nation, South Africa is one of the most um, people, the nation that uses digital media to the greatest extent. I think the average is three to four hours per person per day. If you average it all out, all right? We need to be putting those walls back up. So let's look at 10 walls that should be in place in our lives. Because he says there, a city whose walls are broken down is like a man who lacks self-control. So we're going to look at metaphorical walls. We're going to break them up into three sections. The first section is going to contain the first four walls, as it were, or rather the foundations of the wall. Firstly, the one area that we need is we need direction in life. We need focus. We need convictions. These are the foundations. You know, you cannot put up walls without a foundation. So let's look at this as the first part of the wall. Firstly, you and I, before we get into involved into digital media spaces, we need to know what am I living for? What am I supposed to be doing with my time? What stage of my life am I at? If you, somebody who's at school, you're at the stage where you should be studying. Now, if you and I are not aware of our purpose at that place in our lives and we get involved with social media, guess what? Those studies are going to take a back seat. You're all going to drop a grade or two. You may be held back. You're all going to fail the things that you enrolled for. Why? You don't understand that the purpose of this place in my life is to start putting down foundations. When you're at the new job, when you're at the beginning of your career, you're developing skills. There should be not be time for endlessly just binging and doing stuff. You see, if you don't have a purpose in life, that internet is going to erode the foundations that should be laid. What about your values? What is important in life? Values guide our purposes. Do you want to make a contribution to your life? Should you be raising your children? Yes, you're at the parenting stage. If you're at the parenting stage, you and I should not be giving ourselves endless hours of freedom around devices. What about guiding principles? What are the principles that I'm going to place in my life that are going to guide my behavior? It takes a little bit of time to put those principles. I've got to study right and wrong. I've got to read books about successful people. I've got to learn time management, all those things. But I'm not going to learn it while I'm doing this. You see, the foundation for my career is not being laid. And I'm going to end up being a very poor person late on in life. And that's the problem. You don't see what's happening to you in the moment. But in 10 or 15 years time, you will see. And some people are already seeing that. Then in education, getting true and accurate knowledge. Now the internet is a wealth of information. But you and I, we need to get discernment as to what is truth, what is useful. Some of the stuff out there is just, it's just chatter. It's just noise. It's not really useful or applicable to life. Hey, I bought this car. Let me show you what I did to fix the... Do you even own a car? If you don't own a car, don't watch a video about... You understand? Hey, um... Let me show you this equestrian um, and how she grooms horses and, and how she jumps. If, you if you're not ever intending to earn a horse, don't watch those videos. Do you understand? We, we're wasting our time. We should be developing. What about then? The second category is internal mastery. Think of those as the walls on the inside. Most of us, we look at houses. We say, okay, they built the outside walls. But you know the thing that is keeping that roof up are all the internal walls? You don't necessarily see them, but they're very important. What about self-mastery? 
The ability to choose and control our thoughts, our emotions, our reactions. The ability to self-regulate. The ability to say, yes, I will do it, even though you don't feel like doing it. Or saying, no, I won't do it. When all you want to do is, use, is do it. What about emotional maturity? We're exposing ourselves to these things. And you see a lot of ranting and anger. Depression of people that are addicted to these spaces. Because they haven't built up emotional maturity before they go in. And there's a lot of people ranting on the internet. That's why I said there, there are no filters on the internet. You just people, that they, they behave in ways that wouldn't be acceptable in normal society. What about balance and restraint? What about the ability to switch off, to disconnect? Is it right to go to bed with a cell phone and lay there for two or three hours just scrolling every night? Is it the right thing? It's the wrong thing. You see, if you and I don't have these walls built in our lives and we get free access to that device, that device is going to intrude upon our lives. That's why the Bible says it's like a city without walls. Things come in. That was meant to be kept out. What about boundaries? The third category. External boundary walls. Perimeter walls. Every city had a wall of protection. Keeping enemy, the enemy out. Boundaries. The ability to say. This is how much time I'm going to spend there. And no further. And put that. This is how much money I'm going to spend on data. And no further. Those are boundaries. It's self-control. It's knowing when to say enough is enough. Another boundary is having a public, real-to-life lifestyle, not secretive. In other words, if anybody was to see your accounts, the site you've been visiting, you would maintain your testimony. But we create secondary and third and fourth emails with, hey, Joe Soap, and your name's not Joe Soap, your name's Brett Smith, so, but on that side, I'm known as Joe Soap because I want to hide what I do. The secrecy of sin. Any sin that is secret becomes a controlling sin. Right? You've opened the portal to the internet and the devil has crossed over. We need to be careful about things like that. Nothing in our portfolios, online portfolios, should be shameful or untrue. Now we're getting the point that we're blocking parents, we're blocking children, because we don't want our parents to find out what we really are doing out there. It is unethical for you to be secretive. That's why we need to have these discussions no more in the realm of, hey, everybody's doing it, that person. We need to bring it into the realm of ethics. Is this right or wrong? We need... The final one is independent accountability relationships with real veto power. What did that guy just say? Okay, independent accountability relationships. If you and I are not maintaining control, then we need to give that control to somebody else. We need to be accountability, accountable to somebody else and they have veto power. They have the ability to decide for us on our behalf, yes, enough or not. Your parents need to be able to come and take your phone away. And the only parent that I've ever known that would do that is when they see that the child doesn't know how to put the device down. But that's going to turn into an argument. That's going to turn into a fight. And that already should be wrong. Your parents have the right to tell you to do anything. But don't touch my device. Don't you dare get personal. We're going to take this outside, mom. Hmm? Dad? They have the ability to override your opinion and to apply sanctions to your life. Who has the right to check up on you anytime? They can walk in. There's no put, put the button. They say, open up that screen. I want to see what you are doing right now. Right now. That screen. 
Open everything up. Show me your history. As you hear the footsteps coming. <laughs> Who has the right to say no to you about your digital life? Nobody will tell me what to do with my digital life. Really? If you don't have the ability to self-regulate, somebody's going to have to come and self-regulate for you. Amen. Are there good things about the internet? Certainly. You can earn an income with just a computer at home. You can communicate a lot faster, a lot easier. And it's not just this, you can literally see the person face to face. You can save a lot of time. Like you don't have to go into the bank. Everything is done for you. A lot of time. You can find a bay on the internet, right? You're just like, oh, I'm looking for a lover. Uh, I must look like this. Uh, chest size, I'm talking about guys, bicep size, about that big, that height. Okay, I want to check his bank account. Boom, I found you. You found me. Didn't take long. You can take multiple free courses online. You can study the Bible. You can listen to podcasts, sermons. But you'll only put those things, the digital space to that use, when you already have purpose in life. But if you're going to go into the internet without those walls, you're going to lose your purpose. You're going to lose your direction. You're going to be an undeveloped, poor person dependent on somebody else. That's why we need to bring these discussions into the realm of, is this right or wrong, this behavior? Is it got or has it got out of control? So a belligerent samurai. You know what a samurai is? Those Japanese warriors. All right. He once challenged the Zen master as the guys that know a lot of wisdom. And he said, I want you to explain to me the concept of heaven and hell. But the monk said to the samurai, yeah, you're an idiot. I can't waste my time with people like you. You're useless. While the samurai's honor was attacked. And he said, Whoosh. do you know that I have the ability to kill you right now? And he looked at him with rage. And the monk said, that is hell. The samurai realized, okay, I get the point. Not having the ability to control myself, that is hell. He put his sword back in and he thanked the monk for the lesson. And then the monk said, that is heaven. The lesson there is that your ability and my ability to control ourselves, that brings to us the good life. But a person that doesn't have the ability to control themselves, whether like that samurai with the sword or the person on the screen that has no restrictions in place, in place or is unwilling to have any placed upon them, that is like living in hell. So we go to the final slide. And the Bible says, He who rules his spirit is better than he who takes a city. It's time that we start to apply some boundaries, guidelines, standards to what we're doing in digital spaces. Apply to our lives, our work personas, and in our family lives. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you and uh, we believe your word applies to so many areas of our lives. Your word declares, Father, that the fruit of the Holy Spirit, one of them is self-control. Father, I want to pray that as we go into this week, into this day, that we consider the lives that we are living in hand and the life that you would have us live, Lord, and start to explore the blessings that are already in place and yet at the same time, Father, show us what we are losing because we're not living with self-control. Father, every one of us could take our digital lives and our digital lifestyle and improve upon it. And we want to pray, Father, for the guts, the tenacity, the willpower, the sense of purpose to drive that. Empowered by your Spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.